I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about the engine operating characteristics and in this context we shall introduce a term which is MEP. The full form is mean effective pressure. What is mean effective pressure and if we discuss the engine operation, the role of mean effective pressure is very important and also we shall discuss about the indicator diagram. You know we were discussing about the carburetor in the last a few classes and we have seen that internal combustion engine or any heat engine when we design the sole purpose is to get work output and to get that work output particularly for the spark ignition engine carburetor is an important element. For the compression ignition engines carburetor is not an essential part, but the combustion is initiated by utilizing the you know the high temperature rather the thermodynamic state of the fuel that is that is there in the combustion chamber at the end of the compression stroke. So, now to, to analyze the engine operating characteristics particularly focusing on the mean effective pressure what we need to do we need to draw the schematic of a four stroke engine maybe we will we shall discuss everything in the context of four stroke engine, but eventually the relation several expression that we shall try to drive in today's class also can be written for the two stroke engines. So, if we draw the schematic This is the top dead center and this is the bottom dead center and piston is having reciprocating motion between these two centers T D C and B D C. Now, we have seen that air will be, so we can see that the piston is having reciprocating movement between these two centers and we need to induct air if it is a CI engine or air fuel mixture through this intake manifold to the engine cylinder and piston is having a you know movement between these two stops and we have identified several strokes. So, Today we shall discuss about the work output. This is very important because you know that no matter whether you are supplying only air or air fuel mixture for the CI and SI engines respectively our sole purpose is to get work output at the cost of some energy that is the energy which, which is remaining stored within the sub fuels being supplied. So, the work output you know that uh, that is the work generated inside the combustion chamber of the cylinder. So, the you know air fuel mixture or air which would be eventually mixed with fuel for the CI engine 
during the end of the compression stroke, the sole purpose is to have perfect or efficient conversion and it is because of the because of the conversion due to the gas pressure a force will be acting on the piston face and it is because of that force piston will have movement or piston will travel from TDC to BDC. So, we will be getting work output. Now, so this is the work which is generated by the gas inside the combustion chamber of the cylinder. So, this is the work output. Now, what we what we know because we know the work is basically the force which is acting through a certain distance if we can calculate then we can get the expression of the work output. So, say that piston has displaced the piston has displaced this small distance d x because of the gas pressure which is there inside the combustion chamber and then what would be the expression of work done. So, you know that the force due to the gas pressure which will be acting on the piston face if we draw the three dimensional view of the piston then piston face to be precise. So, this is the piston face on which force due to gas pressure will be acting. Now, if we assume that the pressure is P inside the engine cylinder. So, the force you know we can calculate. So, work done would be you know integral P into A, we are assuming that the area of this piston face is A and it is because of this force it has the piston has traversed a distance d x right. So, this is the expression of the work done. Now, we need to know this particular quantity to estimate the efficiency of the engine because what we are doing whether we are going to have a carburetor or we are going to have different other arrangements for its operation the sole purpose is to get this amount of work done. So, you know this we can write it P into d v because this A into d x this A into d x this quantity is d v. So, this is the differential volume displaced by this gas. So, you know, so this is the differential volume. So, this is the differential volume displaced. So, piston has displaced by an amount d x. So, that this is the differential volume. Now, question is see this is basically the pressure which is very important to predict the amount of work we will be getting inside the engine cylinder. We shall discuss about several terms of the works that we, we need in the context of this engine operation, but the pressure P it is very you know unlikely that the pressure will remain constant throughout the process. Rather as the piston is travelling from TDC to BDC pressure will keep on changing and if the pressure changes we cannot analytically calculate what would be the work done. So, we need to go for some computational you know analysis to calculate what would be the work done because you know that this is the elemental volume which is displaced. Now, if that pressure is P then we can get this expression for another elemental volume pressure P may change from P 1 to P 2 let us say. Not only that 
inside the engine cylinder if we traverse you know specially rather there would be a special variation of the pressure. So, it is not so easy to calculate the work done provided if we, if we introduce another term. So, what we have understood is that we can calculate the work done rather work output from this expression, but it is not so easy to calculate integral P d V that is you know that is basically summation. So, basically if we can calculate what is the pressure at each and every point inside the combustion chamber and because essentially piston will have the change in volume from V T D C to V B D C. So, this d V this d V is V T D C minus V B D C right. So, this is let us say delta V. So, volume will be changing like this, but it is very unlikely that for a change in volume from T D C to V D C pressure will remain same throughout the process. So, it is it is a continuously it is it is changing a co continuously as the piston moves from T D C to V D C. So, to you know get the expression of the work done without going into much complex computational analysis, we can have we can introduce a, the concept of mean effective pressure or average pressure. So, now let us see why that mean effective pressure or average pressure is very important, because this pressure will keep on changing as the piston traverses from T D C to V D C, but if that is the case it is very difficult to get the expression of work done without involving without you know the computational analysis instead what we can do we can qualitatively uh, I can say not qualitatively we can estimate the work done by considering or by invoking the concept of mean effective pressure and that is what is very important in the context of engine uh, operation. Now, you know that uh, engines are multi cylinder very often and if engines are multi cylinder then it is convenient to analyze the engine cycles you know per unit mass of the gas in the combustion chamber, because multi cylinder engines will be there. It is it is quite you know often that engines are multi cylinder. So, for multi cylinder engines instead of writing the expression of work done in this form, it is better to write in the specific form that is to express or to analyze the engine cycles per unit gas of per unit mass of the gas in the combustion chamber. So, what we can do we can write this small w that is w by m equal to p small d v. So, basically what we can write we can write the expression of work done w is equal to minus p d v. As we have discussed about the need of mean effective pressure rather need of the uh, concept of the mean effective pressure. So, instead of writing this because you know that what we can do we can calculate pressure at each and every location inside the cylinder and if we know the change in volume then we can sum up. So, multiply that pressure with the change in volume and we can sum up that is that is the integration. So, what we can write we can write it this is mean effective pressure into delta V. So, this is the work done. So, from this expression so instead it is it, it is not so easy to calculate this integration provided we know the pressure at each and every point and that is very 
difficult to solve uh, without the help of much you know complex computational analysis. Instead, we are writing, we can write this, and from there we can write the mean effective pressure equal to W by delta V. So, this is basically you can, you can see that we have written both the quantities, the quantities both in numerator and den in denominator in their specific form, we also can write like this W by V D. So, this is basically displacement volume. Okay. So, this is the displacement volume. So, you can see that mean effective pressure is very important to, to, to quantify the work output from the engine provided we know the displacement volume, but this quantity is always known because the engine designer designed the engine for a certain stroke length. So, that is the we very often we discuss about x c c engine y c c engine z c c engine. So, what is the meaning of that c c? So, basically the you know uh, uh, you know that the stroke uh, volume that is the total displacement volume of the uh, engine cylinder. So, uh, you can understand that the work output will depend on this displacement volume. So, higher is this volume cubic centimeter c c is cubic centimeter that is the stroke volume or displacement volume. Higher is the displacement volume higher will be work output. So, the engine will be mo much more powerful. So, that is the objective. Now, this mean effective pressure if we just look at the expression which is written in terms of the specific quantities both in numerator and denominator w by delta v and this delta v is basically V T D C minus V B D C. Okay. So, this is the change in volume. This work as I was you know just discussing, let us discuss this particular point. Think that the work which is produced inside the cylinder that work may not be available at the crankshaft because of the mechanical friction that is what we have you know uh, studied. So, basically the work mechanical friction that would be there that we have studied because these are the mating parts. So, the piston will be having to and fro movement and frictional loss between these two mating parts will consume certain amount of work that is being produced. So, the work which is available on the piston face inside the engine cylinder is not available at the crank shaft because the frictional losses are there or frictional loss is there. Over and above that frictional loss you know that some parasitic loads are there. What are those parasitic loads? because you know that we need to run a pump which will sprinkle the lubric lubricants. So, to run that lubricants pump to run the compressor because sometimes we need to have compressed air also air conditioner because in most of the uh, you know uh, uh, cases we will be having air conditioning unit also. So, to run all those units some energy is needed. So, the parasitic loads include the amount of work which would be required to run all those devices. So, the frictional loss between the mating components alongside the parasitic loads you know these two effects reduce the work which is available at the crankshaft. So, you can understand this mean effective pressure we can have several rather several mean effective pressures depending on the work 
or different work. If this W is the work which is available, which is you know, uh, which is available at uh, on the piston face inside the cylinder, then mean effective pressure will be something. If we consider the work which is available at the crankshaft, then mean effective pressure will be have different name. So, if we now go to discuss about the mean effective pressure, several mean effective pressures. So, basically we have first I m e p e. So, this stands for indicated mean effective pressure. Similarly, we will be having B m E p. So, this is break mean effective pressure. We may have F m E p. So, this is frictional mean effective pressure. Okay. Why all these terms? So, see just we have added one prefix I for indicated, B for break, F for frictional. So, we are trying to introduce different works that is indicated work which will corresponds to indicated mean effective pressure. If it is break work, that work will correspond to uh, that work will correspond to break mean effective pressure. If it is frictional you know uh, work, that work will correspond to frictional mean effective pressure. So, basically at least from this from several mean effective pressure that we have written over here, we can see that different works are available in the context of engine internal combustion engine operation. So, if we go you know the work which is available on the piston face or available inside the combustion chamber is the indicated one. So, that means, this is the indicated work. So, if we write here, if we write work available inside the combustion chamber. So, that is W i or W i and I m e p will be equal to W i by delta v. For the same engine, delta v is fixed only the work which is available inside the combustion chamber is the indicated work and if we define the mean effective pressure considering indicated work, it would be indicated mean effective pressure. Similarly, work available at the crankshaft. And this is the W B or W uh, break work. So, this is the break work, and if we define the mean effective pressure based on the break work, that would be W B by delta V. So, the work which is available at the crankshaft that is the break work, but the work which is available at the available inside the combustion chamber is the indicated work. You can understand that means, these two works are not same. So, if they are not same, some amount of work is needed to, 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 to overcome the friction and other parasitic loads that I have already discussed. So, that work is known as W F or W 
f and if we define frictional mean effective pressure that equal to w f by delta v. Try to understand this work is not obtainable from the engine because this is the amount of work which is lost to overcome the frictional loss alongside to run several devices to get the auxiliary you know uh, facilities in the you know uh, in the in internal combustion engine. So, this is all about I mean effective pressure, break mean effective pressure, indicated mean effective pressure or I MEP, break mean effective pressure or BMEP and frictional mean effective pressure or FMEP. So, try to understand from here at least we can write that you know this W indicated is equal to W break plus W friction. So, what we can write is break work is W indicated minus W friction whether I am writing in their specific form or the you know actual form that is irrelevant here. So, I could have written uh, this quantities in their specific, specific form as well. So, what we can see from this particular you know uh, expression that this is the work which is not you know realized in practice this is the work which is available inside the chamber, while this is the work which we get at the crankshaft. So, basically at the cost of some energy eventually you are getting this amount of work, though the work which is produced inside the combustion chamber is even higher. So, certain amount of work is not available at the crankshaft, in other words that amount of work is getting lost for some parasitic loads as well as to overcome the friction. So, from there we can define one efficiency because you can understand. So, W B is not equal to W i minus not equal to W i rather it is slightly less than W i. So, cannot we write it that if we write it that W i uh, W b equal to W i minus W f. So, this is W b is less than W i we really do not know. So, that means, W b is not equal to W i. So, we can write it is equal to W i multiplied with certain factor and that factor is eta m. Certainly, the factor eta m should be always less than 1 and this quantity is known as this quantity is known as mechanical efficiency. of the engine. Okay. So, basically we can define eta mechanical equal to W b by W i. So, the fraction of work which is available at the crank shaft of the indicated work is the eta m. So, this quantity is always less than 1 and you know our objective should be to get more brake work, so that the mecha mechanical efficiency of the engine would be higher. Okay. So, you know that uh, we have talked about all these things, now uh, we have discussed about the need of mean effective pressure in the context of engine operation. From there we have defined several mean effective pressures using different forms of work. Now, 
we have talked about indicated work, we have talked about brake work, we have also talked about the frictional work. Now, you know that uh, if we try to recall the, the basic cycle which we have probably discussed you know uh, in the beginning of this course in, in this particular module. See you know as we have discussed that parasitic loads. So, uh, you know we need to run compressor, we need to run we need to run air conditioning unit, we also need to run some pumps if needed because as I told you that uh, we need to supply continuous coolant to reduce the temperature of the engine cylinder. So, if the coolant should be circulated continuously, so uh, you know that circulation pump should be there. To run all these mechanical devices, you know certain amount of power is needed and that power will come from the power that is getting produced. So, if we try to look at all these you know uh, devices consume power and those are known as negative uh, power. So, basically positive power is the indicated power or indicated work that is available inside the combustion chamber while the negative works that is frictional work and other works to, to, to you know uh, overcome the to, to, to run for the parasitic loads we need some uh, negative work and that some work and that work can be viewed as the negative work in the you know from the uh, perspective of this engine operation. So, let me talk again indicated work is the positive work or brake work is the positive work. Now, brake work is directly measured at the crankshaft while indicated work is not measured. However, now the work a part of the work that is needed to overcome the frictional loss also to run several devices for the parasitic loads the work needed can be viewed as the negative work. So, positive work is the brake work while negative work is the frictional work and associated works which are needed to run for several devices. So, with this now uh, we have seen that it is convenient to define mean effective pressure. Now, let us briefly discuss about the indicator diagram. What is indicator diagram? Why it is so important and should we get anything from this indicator diagram? Now, you, you see that uh, we have discussed that W is equal to integral P d V and that P is the pressure at any point inside the cylinder at any moment. So, that pressure is continuously changing, volume is also changing, but eventually if we know the total volume integral d v from 1 to 2, because eventually we need to integrate from v t d c to v v d c. So, we know the total change in volume would be v t d c minus v t d v d c, but while changing the volume from v t d c to v v d c pressure is continuously changing. So, let us now look into the change in pressure along, along with volume or change in pressure with the change in volume as the piston is travelling from V T D C to V V D C. Now, the diagram which is used to represent the change in pressure with the change in volume as the piston is travelling from tra you know T D C to V D C and again going back to complete one cycle that diagram is known as indicator diagram. So, let us let us uh, draw this diagram. So, if we draw this is indicator diagram. So, we can draw as we have mentioned that we need to see the change in pressure in with the change in volume definitely we need to map the processes in PV plane. What are the processes basically you know that compression expansion power and exhaust all these four processes to complete one cycle of a four stroke engine be it a SI engine or be it a CI engine. So, uh, 
let us quickly identify so this is v t d c and so this is v b d c definitely you know v t d c is less than v b d c because this is the clearance volume right volume is not so still we need to provide some volume and that is the clearance volume okay and you know that if we draw rather if we try to map several processes so this is so this is patm atmospheric pressure so all valves are now closed this is the atmospheric pressure outside the uh, you know uh, engine cylinder what we do we say we have we are trying to take the we are we are bringing the piston from tdc to bdc so if we go back if we go back to this diagram so we'll be bringing piston from tdc to bdc okay so if we do this then pressure inside the cylinder will be less than atmospheric pressure so we can represent so piston is coming from this point and it will be like this piston is coming from tdc to bdc pressure inside this engine cylinder should be less than the atmospheric pressure and it is because of this pressure difference either air fuel mixture or pure air will rush into the engine cylinder and that is what we have seen using uh, from the uh, basic uh, discussion as well as the carburation. Now, when the piston is at BDC, then next stroke is the compression stroke. So, intake valve will be closed, but in real practice intake valve will not be closed immediately when piston start traveling from BDC instead. So, if we draw it so, if the piston start traveling from BDC, it will again come to TDC and the process is like this. So, our entire objective is to reduce volume to increase pressure, right. So, the curve will be like this, okay. So, volume is getting reduced, pressure is increasing and that is the object. Now, ideally, we should close the intake valve when piston is at BDC, but it is not the case we shall discuss all these things uh, later. So, what is done? You know if I uh, mark here, then this is it is not exactly at BDC, but slightly when the piston is slightly air from BDC during the compression stroke, here this is the point. So, intake closes intake valve closes okay. and then exhaust is remaining closed and you can see the exhaust is remaining closed, but now intake closes. So, we can see the pressure rise. If we talk about the spark ignition engine or if it is not the spark ignition engine compression ignition engine at the end of the compression stroke combustion will be there and it is because of this combustion there will be a rise in pressure and temperature inside the cylinder. So, pressure will rise abruptly, but if it is a spark ignition engine we need to switch on the spark plug when we need to switch on the spark plug. So, it is automatically it is nowadays it is electronically control unit. So, spark plug switch will be on when piston is slightly air from TDC during the compression stroke. So, here this is the spark. So, this is point 1, this is point 2. So, 2 is spark plug switch on, okay. So, this is spark plug switch on and 1 is
intake valve closes. And then, so if it is spark plug, spark plug will be needed to initiate combustion or if it is CI engine, there is no uh, requirement of spark plug and combustion will be uh, you know fuel will self ignite and what will be there? There will be huge rise in pressure. So, pressure will rise like this and then at the end of the compression stroke when piston is at TDC pressure will be like this and then again piston will come back from TDC to BDC pressure will fall that is the power stroke and it will be like this. Okay. And you know that piston has uh, it is so okay. So, piston has arrived at VDC, still some amount of pressure is there. Should we uh, you know now piston is at BDC, next stroke is exhaust. So, we need to open the exhaust valve. So, you know that this is again piston will travel from BDC to TDC. When piston is travelling towards TDC, we need to open the exhaust valve. So, this is 3. Before reaching piston at BDC, exhaust valve is allowed to open, so that the pressure inside the cylinder will reduce and when piston is coming back from BDC to TDC again during exhaust stroke, we will face relatively lesser resistance that is the objective. So, that is why this valve exhaust valve is allowed to open when piston is about or is yet to reach at BDC little away from BDC. So, 3 is exhaust valve opens and then piston is coming from BDC to TDC, the combustion gases inside the cylinder will go out from the uh, chamber and then when piston is coming to TDC, ideally we should open the intake valve, but what is done in reality you know that so exhaust valve is exhaust valve is remaining open, but intake valve should I mean ideally intake valve will again open when piston is at TDC, but in reality what is done you know piston intake valve is allowed to open when valve when piston is yet to reach at TDC. So, this is 4. So, not exactly when piston is reaching at TDC, but when piston is yet to reach at TDC slightly higher from TDC uh, intake valve is allowed to open. Again there is a logic behind it because if we open the intake valve, exhaust valve is remaining open, the in intake opening intake valve will allow fresh charge to come in and that fresh charge will you know allow the exhaust valve, the exhaust gases to completely remove from the uh, engine cylinder, but it is not even possible to re you know, complete removal of the exhaust gases. So, you know that ideally at TDC intake will open and exhaust will closed, but we are allowing intake valve to open when piston is little air from TDC during exhaust stroke. So, that fresh charge will come and that fresh charge will allow exhaust gases that would be there in the clearance volume to remove from the engine cylinder that is why exhaust valve is remaining open until piston is again travelling back from TDC to BDC during next 
uh, cycle intake stroke. So, this is exhaust valve is allowed to close when piston is little away from TDC during next cycle intake stroke. So, try to understand which is really interesting that which is really interesting you know this is say 5. So, 5 is so I can write 4 is intake valve opens 5 is exhaust, exhaust valve closes. So, what, what is interesting you know this is the part of the total process wherein both the valves are open are remaining open. So, both valves are remaining open in this part of this total process. So, for intake is allowed to open, exhaust is remaining open until 0.5. So, this is known as valve overlapping in the in this indicated diagram. So, the we have tried to map all the processes for four stroke cycle engine. If it is, so this is parking. Now, if it is not the SI engine then point 0.2 will not be there, because we will be utilizing the self ignition properties of the fuel. But the diagram that we have drawn today is for the four stroke cycle engines and what we can see that we have mapped several processes to complete a cycle of a four stroke cycle engine and from there we have understood several you know timings of valve opening both valve I mean both intake and exhaust valves. And we have also identified an interesting point that there is a regime in which both valves are remaining open and this particular zone is known as valve opening. So, this is known as valve, over, valve overlapping sorry this is valve overlapping. So, you know as if the this is a valve overlapping. So, basically both valves are open. So, need of allowing both valves will be remain will remain open we have discussed because we are allowing intake valve to open when piston is little away from TDC during the end of exhaust stroke because if we do so then fresh charge will come or fresh air will come and that fresh charge or fresh air will allow the combustion gases which will otherwise which will otherwise remain there in the clearance volume to go out from the engine cylinder because the exhaust valve is already uh, open and that is why we are not closing the intake valve again exactly at TDC instead we are allowing exhaust valve to close at 0.5 that is little away from TDC during the intake stroke of the next cycle. And in this particular regime or in this particular zone the both valves are remaining open and it is known as as if two valves are overlapping each other. So, that is called valve overlapping. So, if we summarize today we have tried to discuss about the concept of mean effective pressure relating with the engine operating engine operation uh, of both SI and CI engines. From there we have introduced several mean effective pressure by using different you know, works. And finally, we have talked about the indicator diagram which is very important and if we look at the, the positive work that is the brake work that we are getting that is the if we try to hatch the portion. So, this is the PV diagram. So, integral P d V. Now, this is basically if we try to hatch. So, basically this is the positive work. 
right, while the work that is below PATM that is a negative work. So, you know we have talked about both positive and negative work because break work is the positive work while negative works are the work a part of the indicated work which is needed to overcome the frictional loss and to run several devices for the parasitic uh, uh, as, as a parasitic loads. So, we have discussed this indicated diagram and quite you know interesting to see that there is a zone in which both valves are remaining open and we have discussed about the need of allowing both uh, allowing uh, these valves to be you know uh, opened in this particular zone and this is known as valve overlapping uh, uh, zone. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.